This video is sponsored by Cadeco.com. Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here from Learn Create Play, and we are continuing our exploration of C Sharp by introducing you to enumerations. Now, before we begin, if you find these videos useful, please give a like, or even better, subscribe to the channel for more Unity content. Every single like and subscribe goes a long way. It lets me know you like this content and invigorates me to create more. Okay, enumerations, what are they and what are they good for? They make your code easier to understand. Throughout this course, you've been using all sorts of variable types. We've created ints, strings, and bools. These are defined by c -sharp itself. The int is a 32-bit number. Strings are text. Bools are true and false values. Enumerations are a type that we design ourselves. Let's take a problem. Let's say you want the player to move in four directions, north, south, east, and west. How would you represent this in code? Well, you could create four variables like so. Now, each direction is unique and has a backing number that we can use for comparisons. We've made them constant so the backing number can't change, so we can use them in if statements. But what about this scenario? Here the person writing the code thought they could add north plus east and get the result of northeast. They are hacking the code when the game only supports four directions. Yet the code author just went ahead and created a new direction. Worse still, the code is actually valid and works. Mind you, it doesn't work as intended. The user added north, which had a backing value of zero, to east, which has a backing value of one. The result is 1. According to the code base, the value of 1 makes sense and moves the user to the east. The author thinks the game now supports moving to the northeast, yet when they play the game, the character will move to the east instead. The code is fine, the game is fine, yet the logic is totally busted. With enumerations, we can define a strict series of cases that doesn't allow for deviations. For this to work, we need to define it. First, we use the enum keyword. Some people call it enum, some call it enum. I will oftentimes call it both, sometimes even in the same sentence. For the sake of consistency, I will call it enum. Provide the keyword enum followed by a name of the type that you are creating. Being a name type, you should uppercase it. This is standard convention that you should follow. So in this case, we add enum direction with a capital D. Next, we provide a set of curly braces. These braces will contain all the directions we support. Now we provide each case. We do this uppercase as well. There is a comma after each case except the last one. Congratulations, we've defined a new enumeration and we can assign it very much like a variable. We define a type like so. To assign the east variable, we have to reference the direction type. We do this with the dot operator. Simply put the type name followed by the dot or period. The dot operator allows us to reference values on a type or on an object. If a user decides to create a new direction, they will actually get an error instead of showing it in their editor. So this code will fail since Northeast doesn't exist. Let's put enums to work. But before we do, here's a message about Kadeco.com, the sponsor of today's video. Kadeco is a website that aims to teach coding by actually coding. From videos, articles, and even live boot camps, Kadeco will jumpstart your development career. Throughout the years, a lot of you have reached out to me about my teaching style. I try to be open and accessible to all skill levels, and I think I've been successful. That's the result of having worked with Kadeco for the last 10 years. I'm actually the first employee. I started my journey with Kadeco back when it was known as RayWinderlich.com, building up the website and as an article editor. Then I grew the Unity team over there and spent the following years creating video tutorials on a whole variety of subjects. Now I manage both the Flutter and Android teams. These teams are composed of passionate developers like you. They've learned the topic, mastered it, and now they teach other developers. I learned all my techniques and skills from the developers on the Kadeco teams and by learners like you. We learn, we practice, and we teach. We do so in a friendly, supportive manner. We aren't judges, 
We're coaches looking to take your skills to the next level. That's the ethos of Kadeco and what I do. So if you like this course and you are looking to explore a related field in technology, head over to Kadeco.com. It's the same teaching style. And who knows, in a couple of years, I'll be working with you on your own Unity course. Okay, here we are back in Unity where we last left off. Create a new script and call it enumeration. Attach it to our favorite text game object, making sure to remove the previous script. Let's set this up. Open the script in your code editor and let's update it like so. Return back to the Unity editor and configure the text to be displayed. We've done this multiple times throughout this course. In this case, we'll use the show message method. Now imagine we are writing a 2D game in Unity and we want to define two different directions up and down. This is a perfect case for enumeration. First, let's define the enumeration. With your code editor open, enter the following. Remember the type, that is movement access, the M should be uppercase as well as the A in access. Okay, so we've defined it in a enum. Notice we put it above the class declaration. You'll be learning about classes soon enough. Putting it outside the class means our movement access enumeration is unrelated to the class below it. Add the following. This defines a field inside the Unity editor. Save the code. Now switch back to Unity. Select the text game object and check out the inspector. Notice under the enumeration component, we have a dropdown that contains two values. Switch back to your code editor. We want to use this enumeration to determine the direction. Positive goes up and negative goes down. Let's print out the result. In show message, add the following. Switch back to Unity. Play the game. Select up. Click the button. We get a positive one movement. Now select down. Press the button. We get a negative one movement. Perfect. Or is it? Switch back to your code. We are assigning a value based on the result of an enumeration, but if we get the enumeration wrong, the player will move in the wrong direction. Well, we can actually add values to our enumerations. Add the following. Here we've assigned a value to the enumeration. Now we can actually use it like a constant. Replace the code and show message with the following.
The parentheses with the type indicates a casting operation. We are converting an enumeration into an integer. Thus, we can access the backing value. Don't worry if casting looks a little weird. We're going to be using it a lot when working with objects, so just roll with it for now. Save and switch back. Run the game. Now select up. Select down and click the button. It works the same way. Switch back to your code this time and remove the value from up. Save and switch back to Unity. Select up. Can you guess what will be printed to the screen? Run the game. Press the button. We get zero. Is zero an actual lack of value? Is this an error? Let's test this out. Switch back to code. Update it to the following. Here, down is set to 1,000, and up has no value at all. What do you think up will print up? Save, switch back, run the game, select up. Now click the button. Look at that, it's 1001. You see, once you add a value to a case, C Sharp will automatically increment the next value unless you specify otherwise. Okay, now to put your skills to the test. In the script, create a damage enumeration that provides a single, double, and quad damage type. Then create a public int field that takes in a damage amount. Finally, when the user clicks the button, the correct damage should be displayed on the screen. For instance, if you put the damage amount to 1000, then selecting quad damage would print out 4000. Pause the video and try it out. Okay, let's give this a shot. Open up Visual Studio Code. Let's add the enumeration. For the double case, it will be automatically incremented to 2. For quad, we set it to 4, otherwise C-sharp would increment it to 3. Now for the public fields. Let's update show message. Believe it or not, that's it. Save the script and switch back to Unity. Run the game. Set the damage to single and the damage amount to 1000. Click the button. We get 1000 damage. Now let's do double damage. We get 2000 damage. Finally, let's switch to quad. And we get 4000 damage. Carmack would be proud.